Greetings, my friends. I have something kind of special for you today. I'm doing a collaboration with a couple of good friends, Sandy Huntress and Valerie Mellers. I've left links for you uh, down in the description box to see the projects that they made. We had a theme which was exotic botanicals and uh, each of these two artists made you a really nice video. So I just wanted to show that to you before we start my tutorial because I think you'll really enjoy it and it was really fun to work together on a theme. Uh, mine is based on this project here. It was a project I did for Polymer Cafe for a feature that was about me so I gotta show that off. But uh, that was a last year. You can still get those if you want them uh, at Polymer Cafe online. And I made these uh, couple of collar necklaces and you know I became more and more interested in collar necklaces because of that. I wanted something splashy for the cover but the process of making it was really satisfying. So in that magazine I included this little template and you know that's all well and good but you know it was made to be cut out and I thought well I'd like to have the negative space um, you know template so that I could lay it on cane or I could use it in different ways, so that's what made me come up with the Easy Collar Kit. And I'm telling you that because I'll be using it in this uh, project to make our uh, Easy Collar uh, necklace out of the cane. So yeah, it's a caning video, uh, but you need to be able to make different things. You can use your cabochons here uh, with a silk screen. You could make a textured sheet and cut it out, put some rhinestones in it. And uh, I even include in the kit a bubble mat so that you could do a, a dotted look like this. So you know it's endless, you can do a lot of stuff. But uh, here's my project. Uh, I call it Dimensional Millie Fiori, or skeining, which is sculpting with cane. And it's really a lot easier than it looks, and I think you'll use it a lot. Uh, these are three-part blends that we're going to start with today. And I make my three-part blends the easy way. That is, I take the size blend I want to end up with, and I just make um, a little card, and that can show me, you know, how my blend is going to end up. So, like in this case, I wanted a little more white than yellow. I wanted a lot more red than yellow. So, see, so you can just take a piece of cardstock, and you can kind of, you know, create the ratios. For your three-part blend. All they have to do is end up in a rectangle. That's the, you know, the secret. You just need to end up with a rectangle. So this one I'm going to seal down that one uh, end and just kind of make sure it doesn't have a big bubble or anything. I'm going to put it in my clay machine that way and blend it a few times, fold it in half. Now I'm going to make my long strip and that's the way you do it. You take your piece that you folded in half you put it in the machine the way that you never want to, right? You put it in top to bottom. And this one I'm going to roll up into a jelly roll. Now I can see that I've got more red in the end of that than I want, so I'm just going to remove it. And I really want to retain that pretty transition between the yellow and the red. And you'll see that all through your project. You know, that's the hardest thing I ever do in teaching is to convey that it's not doing what I'm doing, it's seeing what I'm doing and then doing the way you want to. So you see this blend, similar ratios, and I'm going to make um, some of that lime to some of that darker green. You know, you make that dark green just by getting regular green and putting a little black in it. It's really fun to kind of toner it up, figure how dark you want it. I'm just cutting these strips like this <clears throat> and I'm going to lay them out on my work surface. Those are one inch increments. That work surface is a, a sheet of, uh, I think it's for quilting. You know, it's kind of like a nice plastic mat. So here's another blend and, uh, you know, I'm just going to fan fold this one. You see that green one over there? That's just a two-part blend of yellow and green that I pinched into a triangle. So, um, you know, the point of a video like this isn't so much to uh, 
for you to make this project. It's really for you to just see things you can do with the clay. I think you'll like that more because I really never met anybody that wanted to make the exact same thing that I had made. They just want to make cane, you know, and I don't blame them. That's where the fun is. You see, when you have a sheet like that, you can just kind of make it fit. I'm going to compact that a little bit. <clears throat> don't worry about that edge. That's not going to affect the cane at all. I'm going to take this little green stack. And it was made just like this red and gold one. See, I just um, pinched it into a triangle uh, in the light area. And this one probably won't be a triangle because the way we're going to use it later, it would be better just to leave it in this kind of a loaf shape. So I've taken a little strip of um, gold. Uh, you'll see it in a minute. And um, I made it into a triangle. I just made a, a little snake and just kind of made it with a point on top like a soft triangle. I'm taking some of my pretty green and... I'm going to put these together because uh, we're going to end up with this, you know, these exotic botanicals, like I said, and the leaves don't have to look like any leaves that exist in nature. Uh, I don't even want them to. And the flowers get to be made up, never before seen flowers. You know, there's no pressure there because you're just doing what you want as you go. You know, you start with some kind of vision, of course, <clears throat> of, you know, your colors and your scale. But as you go along, you just get to have fun. Now, this is something I do a lot. I like to split open triangles and drop stuff inside. You've seen this in my other videos, you know, with <laughs> with the grooves and uh, the sheets. Well, what those are doing is, you know, all caning is line and fill. And when I finally understood that, I, I just had a lot more fun caning after that. So line and fill. So we've created a channel. Part of it's flat and part of it's round. And that round part down there is going to need to contain fill of some kind, which in this case is going to be a little gold log. Now you're going to see me dropping gold in all over the place because I love that pure gold color. And I want to make sure I end up with enough of it. You know, I don't want to overdo it, but I want to sprinkle it around all through the canes, huh? And that's dropping in a line. And you hear me say that a lot. I get a lot of teasing about it. They're like, I dropped a line and I thought of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, but you know, anywhere that you want a line, you can put one. And every time you put a flat sheet in some place, it's going to create, you know, a line. And it's like drawing in a way. So I've got this one now. And you know, I'm not satisfied. You know, so what? It's a triangle with some stuff in it. Uh, it's time to Pandorify it. So I'm going to take my cane bender rod and I'm going to start putting some curve into this. And you know, you don't have to do any of this. Just, just know that you, know, you can. And that gives me another pretty area to drop a line and put it inside there. Now you know, you never want to completely wrap really almost any element except maybe I don't know, you know, maybe you're going to have a circle that you're trying to make look like a circle. But what I'm saying is, if I completely wrap this cane in a color at this point, <clears throat> I'm going to create a triangle that's going to keep repeating through my whole pattern. Okay? And I don't want that. I, I don't want to have a thing that's outlined that now is, is making too many triangles and too many hard lines in the pattern. And that's, I guess that's hard to explain. I'm not doing very well. But uh, you'll see a lot of times beautiful canes, but they all look like stars, okay? They all look like Chrysler symbols or something. Uh, that's what mine used to look like, and that's because they were wrapped <coughs> too much. So leave these parts open when you cane. Leave your edges all open. You don't want to wrap them because I can put something side by side now like this, see? And I can make a design that doesn't have, you know, a triangle around it. So I don't know, I probably didn't get anywhere with that, but uh, anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to do with mine, and you'll see it over and over again. So, you know, I'm still not satisfied. It, it needs to have a little bit of red. And I've got that nice clean ridge there by the gold, and that's a really perfect place to put an accent. So I'm going to take some of my red, and I'm going to make that little cap on top. See right there? I'm just going to take it to the line 
where I've curled up those edges. And it makes a little mark like we always do in caning and wrapping. And I'm going to just pop that line over the top. So, you know, now as it goes through the rest of the cane and it gets mutated and it gets cut, you're going to be sprinkling in all your colors, as many as you can. Um, I'm sparing with that zinc yellow because uh, yellows are beautiful, but it doesn't take them long to um, completely eat up the focus in a cane. I usually regret it when I overdo it. So you see I've made another curve here and I popped in that piece of yellow. And I, that's, you know, I'm going to cut part of it off because even that little mount there is just plenty of yellow. Just remember what old Pandora told you because you're going to see it sometime. You're going to say, oh my god, you know, wish I hadn't, uh, you know, put quite so much of that in there. So I'm going to take it, I've cut it off, I'm going to roll it up, and I'm going to make it into the bottom of that cane. And so we're going to have taken this cane from, you know, just that little triangle with the little pot of gold and the little um, thin line and we're, gonna, we're going to have made it into something a little bit more plant-like I think. So I'm just going to pull that down together. It's going to form kind of a uh, oval shape for me, kind of a teardrop shape up at the top. And that'll do a lot for me in my end cane. That little line of red, that little poppy yellow, you know, it's going to go a long way. We cut it up. So you'll see that uh, in the final project. It'll be reduced a lot because, as I say, yellow's too yellow. So I've still got my uh, original uh, jelly roll there. I cut it in half. Um, always do that, please. Always cut everything in half. Don't don't put all your eggs in one basket, okay? Just, you know, leave yourself enough stuff to play with. So anyway, I got my jelly roll there, and I'm going to combine it uh, with some of the other cane that I've got, okay? So that's greatly reduced. I've pinched it down into a, a little uh, teardrop shape, a little petal shape. And I'm going to put those two together start doing a little something with them. And really all that was is reducing a reducing that big piece down to a skinny piece and making a pointed edge. So now I need kind of a triangular place, you know, to put that thing. And that's what the square benders are for. Now you're going to be seeing uh, in my other videos square pairs. They're a reduction tool. They're a little bit different than this. Um, I like the weight of these for this job. Uh, because they're uh, they really help me to get a nice size groove see and I can sink it down I can bend up on the sides of it, it comes in a lot of different sizes so I can make different um, you know degrees of depth now I'm going to make sure that that little element that I made is you know pointy enough to to look right in that spot and then I can bring the edges up over it and what you're doing with this kind of stuff is you're just um, kind of eliminating the ordinariness, okay? So, you know, we only have so many things to work with when you think about caning. We've got, we've got jelly rolls, we've got uh, stripes, um, we've got bullseye, you know, which is those things in the middle there. Well, there aren't that many other elements to play with, so you got to bend them, you know. Yeah. So now I've got those. I know I'll have a lot of fun with them. I've got enough to cut off a chunk. So what I always do, this is the most fun thing ever, if you're going to love it, is I take about an inch of each of these canes. You know, about an inch. I mean, I'm kind of a little bit sloppy with it, but that's okay. I'll take this one. This is kind of, uh, it wasn't the cleanest reduction I've ever done there. It's a little kind of narrow at the ends. Anyway, I'm going to take a, a hunk of that, make it a little bit bigger since it's kind of narrow and, and uh, crappy. And I'm going to put them these aside, the big ones, because they're going to be our project. And they're kind of, it's actually, that's gobs of cane for all the, just one necklace. But we're going to take these and put them together. And this little exercise not only is it relaxing and kind of an escape from all the hard work of caning, but it really f helps you to understand caning when you just 
throw some stuff together okay so I do that a lot you know may I don't think I use this actually used any of this cane in the project but all I was trying to do is just to see how the things were working <clears throat> and if they're gonna get me you know where I want to go sorry about the allergies my poor my poor watchers they have to listen to this allergy voice okay so anyway that's uh, that same cane I have made it a lot more pointy reduced it a little bit so that I could kind of get these I don't know these kind of diamond shaped you know petals and you know when you're doing exotic botanicals you know <laughs> the world's your oyster okay so with this here I'm gonna cut out my base and um, I'm gonna take my template you know you can make your own template any way you want to I just got these because um, they have a coating of PE plastic on each side and that doesn't interact with clay see so that way you can just wipe it off with a paper towel and keep using it and it doesn't you know it's not like paper it doesn't get all stained or anything <clears throat> so, okay so I've got it laid out on a piece of uh, parchment this parchment comes and folded up like that I think it's like deli paper I got it at the restaurant supply Okay, so I'm going to take my uh, template off. As I say, it doesn't stain up or anything. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to bake this on a bowl. So what the bowl deal is, is, you know, this is from the dollar store. I was going to get them for you guys and put them in the kit, but, you know, who doesn't have a bowl, you know? He's going to pay extra for nothing, you know? Anyway, I got this at the dollar store. And it's 21 inches around or six and a half inches across, but you'll see what fits, you know, it's pretty easy to see what size bowl to use. You can use metal or glass. This isn't even Pyrex or anything because 275 is not that hot. I'm going to pop on my uh, bales. These bales come um, in the kit because I was surprised how hard it was to get any decent bales, you know, like at the craft store. And I'm going to press them in and I'm going to bake it like that. Okay? So there's the other stuff you get <clears throat> in the kit. You get the bales. You get uh, those pretty clasps and chain and all that stuff with crystals. So I'm going to start cutting. While that's baking, I'm going to start cutting some of my material up. Let it settle down a little bit. And I'm going to make another um, base just like that one you saw only this is going to be the one that we decorate okay make it exactly the same way but i'm not going to bake it yet okay so there it is that's my second one that i made and i like to just kind of lay down you know just lay down a cool background i don't have to uh, sculpt those leaves or anything like that you know they look fine as a kind of the the forest okay and I see I put down some of those other ones see how I doubled them up the ones with the yellow because you know you knew that yellow was over the top so I squeezed it and doubled them up a little bit and then put them together and cut them it looks better I like that kind of heart kind of flower shape and I've taken pieces of you know all this cane and you'll see canes come popping up in this uh, project that you know you didn't see me make but the point is is that you take all the stuff you've got you start messing with it and it's just way cool and fun I like stuff to hang over the edges see there just make sure that it's nice you know and hardy that it's not too thin not gonna break off and when you use your you know like there's some leaf material I didn't really show you how to make it but you get the idea and uh, that other one I'm holding I don't even remember making that one I think I was kind of zoned out a little bit there but um, all the pieces that you make you know as long as your colors work together which you know they do um, make whatever you want to and take your time this this project really actually took me about a week because I kept you know playing with it so now I'm wanting to coordinate anything I add now in scale colors fine we know that and you get your scale really it's an eyeball thing you don't want anything too gigantic uh, you can go pretty small but if there's one flower or one leaf you know that's not in scale you'll see it right away and this is how I do that see those little flowers down there look like they're 
bigger. Well, this is the same size I've been using, but when you start to work with it, you kind of stretch it. See? And you just warm it with your fingers pinch it and pull it a little bit. Take your scrap pieces, you know, your bad cuts, which I always have a bunch. Uh, take those and mess around with them and really they're, they'll turn out to be some of your prettiest ones that you really like. So that's what I was doing with that. I was trying to get them kind of bonded at the bottom. And then I can make the leaves kind of wavy. I can stretch them out and make them um, more rounded by pulling in the center. Or I can leave them that kind of flat, you know, rounded triangle look. And then when I like it, you know, who gets to tell us how to do it? No one, okay? The clay is not the boss of us. We're the boss of the clay. When we like it, it's done, okay? I got my Christie Friesen tool. They really are the very best tool I've, I've ever used. Okay, and I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to settle it down over there. And I'm going to make it look however I want it to be. See that one right there? I want to go underneath, kind of tucked underneath there. See, it'll be more secure that way because it's not a very heavy piece. I'm going to curl that a little bit. And see the tool kind of gives you one side to work with and, and your fingers can do the rest, okay? So really just those little slices and that's kind of important, you know, don't put your slices together before you start, okay? I, it's really tempting to make everything into a kaleidoscope, but I didn't. I just did the little ones like that because I knew I was going to want to take, you know, all those pieces and kind of do them however I wanted to, and I didn't want to be stuck with them already put together, okay? So take your time on this part of it. You know, these little flowers, see how they're round right now, but in the project how they're wavy well that's that's not hard it's really easy so you just get this thing like this see how thick that slice is that's because I'm going to squeeze it and stretch it I don't want it to you know disintegrate so it's kind of a thick slice you don't have to be careful with your slicing with this kind of uh, you know 3d kind of thing you don't have to be careful just get a slice and mess with it so now that comes out to be a petal shape, and I don't have to do the work of actually making a cane, you know, with all those waves in it. You know, you can do it later. And through this process, you know, you can get them a little bit bigger, too. So you can really reduce them to really small sizes and then adjust them as you go. They make nice accents, I think. Um, give them a firm poke down in the center when you place them, okay? because that's going to really make them secure. Raw clay to raw clay is a good bond. You don't have to slop all kinds of adhesive in there, okay? You know, it, it would just be a, a nightmare right now if I were working with adhesive. But raw clay to raw clay with a good, you know, amount of pressure gives you a good bond. And now here's a little trick you're going to want to use through all your projects that are dimensional, really pure. And that is to prop things up. So I want that leaf to have a little bit of wave in it. I don't want to just splat it on top of that other flower. You know, I want it to look, you know, more growy. There's a word for you. And so I'm going to take my petal. And I'm going to settle it down over just a little piece of coordinated scrap. That's just, you know, some bad cut I had laying there. Okay. And now I've got a leaf you know, it's kind of raised up and and looks more uh, lifelike. So once I've got it the way I want it, uh, I'm going to decide if I want to add texture. Today I'm going to add a very simple dotted texture to the negative space. Now obviously you could just leave that like that. It's really pretty. Um, but I put uh, texture on it. So now my uh, original piece is out of the oven. And it's cooled off by now since, you know, it took forever and a day to make that, yeah, the flower thing. And I can take it off of here just by popping it off. And I'm going to glue down those bales. Since they're imprinted onto that, they're going to fit really well. They're not going to cause a lump in the top piece. And that's a really good way to do it. But there's lots of ways to do it. Okay. Um, I glued those um, bales on with super glue. But I, I, I cut that part out. I don't, I don't really know why. 
Uh, anyway, you super glue the metal pieces on there, okay? Your bales. And they're nice and dry because, uh, you know, you want them to stay on while you're handling it. And you don't want to have to depend on just the bacon bond <clears throat> and the second piece to hold the bales on because that's the key area that's going to take the most stress. You take your brush. I use disposable brushes because it's icky to try to get the bacon bond out of them. I don't feel like it. So then I take my decorated piece and it's nice and solid. You can see it's really sturdy really. You've done a good job of pressing it down. Um, you're going to want to get it uh, in place and kind of you know lined up with the base. Sometimes you'll see that your top piece is shorter because of the stretching that takes place when you lay out the first piece. But you know, that's why it's clay. We can make it fit because we're the boss of it. So on these ends, you know, the more you handle them, kind of jacks up your uh, texture. So you just add it back and that also presses it down quite a bit. You can bake it up just like this. Or you can put a piece of wire through those bales if you want to pull it up higher on the bowl to make it, you know, smaller. I'm going to bake that for an hour. And there you go, it's all baked. You can use, uh, you know, shiny stuff if you want to. I kind of wanted mine this rustic look. So that's the project. You know, be sure and subscribe and come and see me. And thanks for coming. See you next time.